Hello everyone, my name is Justice, aka Touchpad Warrior, and I'm going to go over some of the tricks and tips as an arms warrior trying to do your class challenge, class trial, class challenge, whatever you want to call it. Um, I personally have not been able to complete this, I think I'm just a little under geared to get to the last phase, but there are still some tricks and tips that I might be able to spend on to you guys that might be good enough to be able to knock it out. Um, there's, there's just like when to use your cooldowns and just little things like positioning that might be able to help push you over to get it. So at the start of the fight, uh, I have Drawn of Souls, so we go through a Drawn of Souls rotation. I have a basic warrior build. I'm running double time. I have a 902 item level as of this recording. I have a 904. I tried it again later. Hopefully I thought it would help, but it didn't. Um, this first icicle phase, if you run through any of those frozen ice shards, you're going to get one shot. Uh, because we started off with Avatar, and our old warpod at the start, we're just going to use cleave and whirlwind to knock those down. It's not the highest damage, not the fastest way you can get out of it, but it's better because you're going to have at least two more of those frost phases. On the second one, we're going to be using a blade storm, and on the third one, we're going to use a warbreaker and cleave whirlwind rotation to get out of it. So there's the blade storm. Uh, one of the other tricks is he can leap to any of those quadrants. You can heroic leap over those beams and not take damage. If you charge over the beams, you will take damage. Uh, so you usually would use charge for if he's nearby, it will help. Uh, you have to make sure, obviously, you have a high enough health. With this attempt that I did, I'm running the legendary braces that heal you for 1% of your maximum health every rage, 10 rage you spend. Um, and I'm running KJs because KJs is pretty damn important for the last phase. There, I had to do a risky move which was leaps on, it wasn't on cooldown, but I know I have to use it later. That was the Warbreaker and Cleave rotation, the Whirlwind. I wanted to Rocket Boot, that means you don't get to use a second pot later, but I had to get over the boss and I was too afraid of dying. This is the Arcane phase. I call it the Shadow phase, because there's a lot of shadows, but technically the Arcane phase. Each one of these mobs you kill will give you a little Absorb Shield bubble, and that will heal you. They have just over 500,000 health, so you can kill them pretty quickly. I've had a pretty shit scenarios where uh, I had them to about 1,000 health left. I just didn't get lucky with the damage. But the idea, I'm going to pause the video real quick. The idea is that you hopefully are on top of one already. And when you're on top of one already, smack it down real quick. You get the heal. And on the mini-map in the upper right corner you can see in a gold dot where his positioning is. The idea is that you have to get to exactly where he is. You don't you have to use damaging abilities by any means. You just have to walk to him and he will phase out of that. If you stand on the ground, you will die. You take about 1.3 million health every second. So with double time, you're gonna find out and try to map your area, map your way to the boss so that you charge, you kill one, charge to another one, kill it, charge to another one, hopefully you don't have to, you can get lucky as positioning is random, kill it, and then leap to the boss. You leap to the boss, he's going to phase out of that, and he's going to go through a different arcane phase, opposed to the frost phase that we had earlier. So I did a pretty easy rotation on him, got him there. He does blink in this phase, the upside of the map. Just make sure you run around the ley line beams. Uh, you do not want to interrupt arcane barrage here, because he's just gonna he's not gonna move at all with you. There's a channel cast that he does that every second it goes off, you will get 10% increased damage. You have to make sure you save your pummel for that moment. So now we're gonna deal with another one of these shadow phases. Kill off that guy real quick. Trying to look probably looking at the menu at the time, can't see it. But seeing where the gold dot is, mapping out our area. That was really close there. We're gonna charge over one of these beams. Hopefully get close enough. Bam. I did get knocked back. Those prismatic shot casts, they knock you back as well as doing damage. And heroic leaps onto the mob. So you got position now. The shadow barrage, they don't one shot you if they hit you, but they definitely take out a good chunk of your health. Uh, you can tell which direction they're running towards you because the two eyes are coming towards you, right? You can see it, very tiny bright eyes inside of them. Um, but the other way is like his casting hand is the direction of where they are going. And they can spawn directly on top of him. 
So I recommend if you want to play it safe, don't be directly on top of them. You can also outrange them and run off to the side, then charge back in later when the phase is done. So in this phase, after the second shadow phase, you have to deal with being in roots again. Now it's important that you use Bladestorm first on that first one, because you're going to need it for the adds that are coming up in phase four, and it needs to be off cooldown. The second freeze that happens, you can use a Warbreaker and a Recombo. You don't have to use Warbreaker, you can get out of it quick enough, but I thought it was too risky to stay down here. And it looks like I messed up my rotation a little bit. Well, okay, fuck what I said. Um, I don't know what I did out of the first freeze then. And here it looks like I'm spamming Focus Rage to try to heal myself with my Legendary Bracers. I used a Fear to stop him from casting temporarily. And I'm pummeled this Frostbolt. So with Legendary Bracers, it makes this a little bit easier, being able to heal up real easy. Um, in fact, a lot easier. So if you don't have them, I don't know what else you can do. You can also, if you have the Legendary Shoulders, they give you another Heroic Leap Charge. That helps a lot with those Shadow Phases. Here's one more Arcane or Shadow Phase. I'm trying to map out my location right now. Charge. Here comes another charge. I'm trying to get to the closer one. Might be able to inch it. And we decided to go the other way. Oh, good job. All right, past justice. So this will end when he is at 10%. I have to deal with one more of these Shadow Barrage Phases. It looks like it's interruptible. It's not. You cannot interrupt this spell. You cannot stun it either. I've tried. So 10% goes into his next phase. In this phase, you're going to have a shadowy ad that has 90 million health. I think it's 94, 96. We'll see in a second. And every once in a while, he will drop a defile, like how from Broke Lich King was. Um... Actually, it was in all Lich King difficulties. Scratch that. Uh, he drops a Defile. Defile is when it starts off with a small pool, slowly, slowly, slowly spreads. Um, so the idea here, and I kind of messed up because I didn't engage the boss quick enough. You see one spawning on the boss right there, or the, uh, the mage, is that you let him cast it a little bit and then kite it and just edge the shadows that are growing. Now that cast that he does, you do not interrupt that cast. If you interrupt that cast, it will spawn these three adds right away. And let me catch up with the video real quick. That channel that he does, as soon as you see a little debuff next to my sated, and I did blood and lust in this phase, I probably should have saved it for these adds to be honest. Um, that debuff he does, when it ends, the three adds will spawn. They all have 5.8 million health each. So the idea here, idea, idea here, is to Warbreaker, KJ's, Bladestorm. Kill him off real quick. If any of these touch the boss, it heals him for 18 million health. It's pretty much a wipe. You, it's hard to come back for the damage because with the spreading shadows on the ground, you're gonna run out of space eventually. I know it looks like you can jump off the map right there. You can't. I'm trying. <laughs> um, so we're gonna see me go through the rotation right here. There's Warbreaker, here comes KJ's, and Bladestorm. Now you can do other things. Some warriors use Shockwave in this phase to prolong them getting to the boss and give you a little bit more damage time. Uh, some warriors have recommended going Sweeping Strikes, so that way your Mortal Strikes and executes cleave on other targets. I have not tried Sweeping Strikes. Uh, I tried Shockwave for a little bit. I didn't like it. I have War Stump as a Tauren. That helps a little bit. Right now it looks like I overextended a little bit. I could have kept him in the pool a little longer. Uh, I think the idea is that you're supposed to have three of those sh Shadow Add phases before the map just gets covered. And you're supposed to have enough damage to kill him in that time. So right now I'm trying to inch him, making sure I'm not hitting the shadow. And just in case you're wondering, the shadows do a lot of damage too. It's about a third of your health a second. Uh, maybe a little bit slower, but it will kill you if you're just standing in it. So you do have to avoid it. Getting him pretty low here. Again, this is my best attempt. I couldn't do much better than this. Heroic leap away. Waiting for the debuff to fade. Now, I don't have battle cry here. I don't have KJs. All I had was Warbreaker, and I tried to risk it with using Jada Souls without even Battle Cry up. And it only killed one of them because Jada Souls does have range. And what you can see is KJs comes up in two seconds. So what I could have done there if I had Shockwave was stun the adds and just prolonged 
that phase happening, or prolonged them running to the ad. After he's done with his cast right there, he will run to the ads. Like he'll he will run to you. He's threaded to you. Um, so you only have until that channel ends really to kill off those ads. So what I could have done there, in hindsight, was shockwave, and just wait. I could have used fear too to also keep them in place. Um, some of them would spread off to the side, but if you do damaging ability, kind of acts as if it's a stun. They will break out of the fear and be regrouped. Um, they will fixate towards the boss. They're not going to be threaded to you. But if I shockwaved and then KJs, looks like Bladestorm was almost up too. Then I might have been able to kill off at least the second wave. That was the best attempt I could do. Um, there's a few other tricks. Like if we go back here, let's see. If we can go back to the frost phase in the beginning. That's arcane. Very beginning of the fight. One of the tricks that I learned, I'm not even sure if I actually went over the video, I probably did already, just in case, is when you interrupt these frost bolts, you can, he will run with you and you can run him towards the center. If you touch that center, you will immediately die because it's all four beams hitting you at the same time. Heroic leaping over it is safe. You're totally okay doing that. And some warriors claim that you can actually heroic leap over those icicles and be fine. I don't like risking it. I'd rather DPS them out. Um, but what I would do is I would just interrupt him and then carry him to the center a little bit. And that would give me just the slightest bit more range for heroic leap. I'm trying to think of any other tips you could do. Honestly, this stuff just seems way overtuned at the moment for Nighthold gear. It's tuned for Tumas or Jairus. I think we kind of made a regional mistake of going to the Mage Tower, being excited to get our cool artifact skins, especially all the Guardian Druids with the Rare Bear. Um, that's pretty much it. Like the, the easiest tips, or the most important ones, is time your AOE cooldowns correctly to get out of ice, uh, interrupt the boss as much as possible, pray for Arm Jesus for his teleporting positioning, that you will actually be able to get to his location within two charges and a heroic leap. Some warriors actually don't go double time because they would go for shockwave so that's the sacrifice right there so if you have to do that you really have to get lucky or you need legendary shoulders because if you have legendary shoulders then you don't need to go double time you have that stun in the last phase but that means you would have to sacrifice using the healing legendary bracers which means you have to be way better with your survival cooldowns and things there's a talent in the new artifact tree that has a chance to heal you for a decent chunk of health I don't have that yet. I'm 41 and actually made a mistake in my talent tree and went for tacticians, assuming that would be the best choice. Turns out it's not. So rip me. Um, but yeah, phase one, manage your rotation. It's just burn and interrupt them. Make sure you're rotating between your AOEs. Try to save heroic leap as much as possible for when that shadow phase happens. It is fixed by time. Doesn't seem like it's fixed by percentage. Uh, the mob's health, the difficulty, it, it doesn't scale to you like how others do, like Proving Grounds in last expansion. Um, shadow shit right here, yeah, it's a very vague term. These shadow orbs that are coming towards you, you can't outrange them again. It will help if you really think you can't avoid them, but you can DPS while it's happening if you're really good at dodging. This phase, make sure you stand on top of one, smash it down real quick. Sometimes I've saved Battlecry for this phase. It sucks, but I need that guaranteed crit to make sure I'm killing them off. You're seeing I'm killing them off pretty quick like right now, but I've had plenty of attempts in, I think, the 60 that I've done where I didn't have enough damage with a Mortal Strike. You get to them as quick as possible, you dodge Shadow Barrage, you burn them down. And at this point, I've done this enough that it's just frustrating. I, I don't think that I can do it with my current gear. I've done the mechanics correctly, but those shadow adds in the last phase, I just can't burn them down quick enough. Maybe if I got a few more attempts in before the mage tower gets destroyed in about 23 hours, I could get close, but I'll probably die anyways because the shadow stuff on the ground, which kind of acts as a soft rage. I just don't want to frustrate myself anymore. I'm going to wait until I get a little bit more gear and as I highly advise a lot of you to, also do that. Just wait for TOS gear to come out. Don't sit here bashing your face on the keyboard. Anywho, 
that's all the tips I have for you guys. I hope some of them help. This is just, this recording was in one shot, so I'm sorry if it is not pristine and edited, and if I swear a lot, or if I went over too many things multiple times. Um, but I'm, I'm just, just now getting into doing YouTube videos and stuff. I've never really had content that I thought was super important to share or to try to help people. I usually just run my Instagram page and I, I stream on Twitch. Uh, I am more than grateful to take any of your questions if you have them. And any other tips, feel free to comment below any tips that you have for doing this fight. Maybe some legendaries that might have helped. Sadly, that sucks because not everybody has the same legendaries, but it's good to hear and understand from the community anything that might help us with this overtuned challenge to try to beat it. Because there are warriors out here that have completed this. And if you think you have a high enough item level, then give it a shot. Maybe these tricks will help you out. I don't know. But I wish you all good luck. And hope you get your new artifacts again. Thanks for watching. See you later.